I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking every major setting for graphics and performance differences and showing you my optimized settings. Given that Cyberpunk 2077 basically came out of early access with its 2.0 update, I figured it's time to make an updated optimization guide for it. So, let's start off with the HDD mode. The game is now required to be installed on an SSD, as support for hard disk drives was dropped. So, this setting was tested with a SATA SSD only. I tested this setting in both CPU and GPU limited scenarios, and I wasn't able to see any difference when CPU limited. However, when GPU limited, I noticed a small increase in the 1% low FPS, going from 23 to 25 FPS. Now this could be within the margin of error, but just in case, I'd recommend you set this to on, regardless if you have an SSD or a hard drive. Moving on to the new AMD simultaneous multi-threading setting, which is supposed to better utilize AMD CPUs. On my Ryzen 5 3600X, turning the setting on increased performance significantly. Therefore, if you have a compatible AMD CPU, double check that this setting is turned on. Now I will leave you to the rest of the settings and jump back in when there is something important to note. The way the game organizes its upscaling technologies is a mess. Therefore, for ease of comparison, I have compiled all the upscaling techniques into one category. If you have an NVIDIA RTX GPU, use DLSS or DLAA. And if you have any other GPU, use XESS. And if you need the spare performance of FSR, only then I would recommend using it. I had a hard time noticing any difference with the improved facial lighting geometry setting.
screen space reflections is the most demanding setting other than ray tracing. You can get a lot of FPS by turning this setting down to medium or high. In fact, using SSR Ultra or Psycho results in worse FPS than using ray traced reflections on some GPUs, such as the RTX 3060. Color precision has no noticeable impact on image quality. Keep it on medium for a small increase in FPS in some scenes. you'd almost never notice the difference in level of detail quality settings because it's so hard to notice what it does. However, in this scene, we can see that going from high to medium looks the same and gives a small increase in FPS, which would really help in CPU limited scenarios as well. Speaking of CPU limited scenarios, the crowd density setting is the most impactful to the atmosphere of the game and the CPU performance. In the city, going from high to medium increased the FPS from around 59 to 80 FPS. That's an astonishing increase of over 35% just from one setting. Cyberpunk 2077 has the best looking ray tracing effects out of any game so far, and its performance surely does reflect that. So, be ready to over half your frame rate if you want to use ray tracing, and if you're crazy enough to use path tracing, you'll need an RTX 4090 for sure. The new ray reconstruction setting greatly increases the ray tracing image quality and slightly increases FPS as well. But in order to use it, CDPR have locked it to path tracing only, which means you can't use it with regular ray tracing, basically killing its usefulness for 99.9% .9 of the player base.
Now let's compare the max settings against the optimized settings in the most performance intensive area in the game. Performance has increased significantly. Note that the CPU is being bottlenecked at this frame rate, with a lot of GPU headroom to spare. So you might even get more FPS than my system. This shows that the game is really scalable. And if you have a budget CPU like me, you can now get a consistent 60 FPS 99% of the time, thanks to the 1% low staying at 59 FPS. And if you want to use ray tracing, with my optimized ray traced settings, you'd only be getting a small increase in FPS in the city over the already low frame rate the game manages to squeeze. The performance difference seems to be so little between max ray tracing and optimized ray tracing, most likely because of a CPU bottleneck here as well. You'd be seeing a bigger difference in less CPU intensive areas of the game.